Thank you all for joining us tonight as we look at Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 34. So turn there in your Bibles if you would. Tonight begins our study on the heroes of the faith in the New Testament. And so we're going to look at one of my favorites. And a lot of people call her the woman with the issue of blood or the unclean woman. But you know what? You know, it's kind of like Rahab. You know, we shouldn't call her Rahab the prostitute. We should call her Rahab the evangelist, shouldn't we? Because she's no longer what she goes, what she was. She's what she became in Christ. And so we're going to call this woman the clean woman. She's no longer unclean, but she's clean. So let's look at this together. Let me turn on my mic here. Okay. So uh, Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 34. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment, for she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude throng you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. So we see here that this woman had this problem uh, most doctors today call it chronic menstrual disorder. She'd been bleeding for 12 years. And she became more and more weak. She became more and more uh, dysfunctional and, and, and rejected by people. And that was, you know, it was hard on her to keep going to doctors and using up all of her money in 12 years and not even getting any better, but... Even, the scriptures say that the doctors even made her worse. And so she had heard about Jesus. She had heard about him touching the leper, where everybody else would scream, leper, leper, and run. Well, Jesus ran to the leper and, and just touched him. And he was instantly healed. As a matter of fact, many were instantly healed. And so she thought, you know, I've heard about this Jesus. Kind of like what we sang about, you know, I, we, we sang in Victory in Jesus a moment ago that, that I've heard about his cleansing, uh, of his power revealing, and so uh, then I trusted, and that's what she did, see. She, she said, well, I, I'm terminal, I, I'm going to die, there's no doubt, I, I can barely eat or function at all, and, and this is my last chance. So I encourage you. Don't wait till it's a last-ditch effort to go to Jesus. Go to Jesus first. Even before you go to your doctor, go to the great physician first and ask him to heal you. And so I always tell you, and I want to remind you, that, that when you go to Jesus and you ask him for something, ask him one time in faith and know that he heard you and know that he loves you. And know that he's going to give his best to you. And then after that, just have faith he's going to do it. Instead of asking over and over and over again, Jesus said, don't pray those repetitious prayers. I've already heard you. Just have faith. And so we can trust him and praise him and say, Lord, I praise you that you're going to answer this prayer. And, I, and I'm believing it's going to be very soon. And of course, sometimes God says, no, I'm not going to. You know, we've all lost loved ones. They've gone to heaven. There's, we have an appointed time, a, a, a day, an hour, a moment, a second that we're born. 
And we have that, that second, that day that we're going to graduate into heaven. And so we, we as Christians rejoice and look at that as graduation day and, and know that it's going to be greater than it's ever been in our whole existence. But we know that Jesus is in control of that. So I just encourage you to let this story of faith tonight increase your faith. Because Jesus can still do anything. And like the leper, she was cut off not only from society. When people saw her face, they would, they would run from her. They would scream, unclean, unclean, look at that woman right there. Get away from her. And so everybody gave her that title as unclean. Even her own family, her friends, her neighbors, even her own church family would scream unclean. Jesus was the only one that welcomed her and loved her like he did. And then that changed everything, didn't it? So this story is also over in Luke chapter 8, and we're going to look at that real quick because it's just a little bit different. But every time you see something different in Scripture, it's because it's a different perspective, kind of like a witness that sees a wreck on the road. You know, they all have a different witness to give about what they saw and heard. So uh, Dr. Luke tells us, in Luke 8, 43, now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any came from behind and touched the border of his garment and immediately her flow of blood stopped and Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those who were with him said, Master, the multitudes throng you and press you and you say, who touched me? But Jesus said, somebody touched me for I perceived power going out from me. When the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. So it's very similar, but just a little bit different. And, you know, the, the scriptures that talk about uh, a, a woman or a person being unclean, uh, is there in Luke 15, verses 25 through 27. We're going to look at that real quick. You don't have to turn there. It's on the screen. If a woman has a flow of blood for many days that is unrelated to her menstrual period, or if the blood continues beyond the normal period, she is ceremonially unclean. As during her menstrual period, the woman will be unclean as long as the discharge continues. Any bed she lies on, any object she sits on during that time will be unclean just as during her normal menstrual period. If any of you touch these things, you'll be ceremonially unclean. You must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water, and you'll remain unclean until evening. So the clean woman we're talking about tonight trusted the revealed love of God that was revealed throughout the Bible. All they had back then was the Old Testament. But in the Old Testament, we see the same God, a God of love, a God that says, you can always come to me, and I have the power to help you. So she trusted what she had heard about that revealed love of God and the word of God and his power and his commandments that he gave that if you will obey me, if you will have a right heart with me and a relationship with me, then I will hear your prayers and I will help you. You know, the Lord tells us that we need to trust God like the clean woman. You know, she, she had a, a hard time. Uh, she, she, she had to fight her way through the crowd. Uh, this is a beautiful picture I have on the screen of, of her touching uh, the robe of Jesus, and I want to give credit to Ron DeCiani, and his artwork is there at rondeciani.com. Mardell's Christian Bookstore has a lot of his paintings uh, through the years that they sold, and you can still get them online, and I, I consider them the very, very best, but uh, that was Ron's painting of that incident there uh, with the clean woman touching Jesus, and so if you're taking notes, write this down for number one. Uh, I know the Lord Jesus Christ uh, made her not only a great hero in heaven, 
but also on earth. And when we get there, I want to meet her. You know, I, I want to thank her for the example that she was, the faith that she had. So write this down for number one. It's a little bit different than the notes I usually give, but uh, it makes a lot of sense. Our faith should be like the clean woman who ran to Jesus when everyone around her dissed her. And you might not know what that word dissed means. It means disrespected. Young people use that today. Uh, when you say something, uh, they call a cut down, an insult to somebody. You know, one of the kids go, man, you dissed him. And that, that's all about disrespect. And everybody around this woman dissed her, disrespected her. And uh, they ran from her. Uh, you know, there's times when people will do that to us as Christians. Most Christians today are disrespected and laughed at, scorned, ridiculed. And you can't let Satan get to you when they do that to you. You've got to stand strong. When everybody else laughs at you because of your undoubting faith, whenever, when anybody around you uh, uh, cuts you down and insults you because you say, I have the truth here about the Bible, about Jesus, about spiritual things, or even about things on the earth, you know, the, the facts about What's going on around us? There's a lot of disinformation today, a lot of fake news. They'll laugh at you and say, I oh, mean, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, that's, that's wrong. Well, you, you've got to stand your ground and, and show, present the evidence. And so when everybody around her disrespected her, she had hope, didn't she? She had undoubting faith. That didn't bother her a bit. She could have just given up. And so many Christians do that. They just give up. Oh, God will never help. They're right. They're, they, they, have, they have a real good reason to disrespect me that way. You know, everybody else disrespects me, and, you know, God won't hear my prayer. And Satan lies to them like that. And, and you've got to be strong and say, I know God. God's not like that. God cares about me. He loves me. He created me, and he wants the very best for my life. And so when everybody around you disrespects you, you know that God highly honors you and loves you, especially if you're born again, you're a child of God. And if there's anyone listening to me online that's not born again, you're not a child of God, it's never too late because Jesus loves you so much that if you were the only one ever created, God would have come in Jesus to die for you alone. That's how much he loves you. That's how special you are to the Lord. So write down number two, our faith should be like the clean woman who ran to Jesus when everyone around her pressed her. Not only did they diss her, but they pressed her. You ever been in an elevator with about 10 people? It's not real comfortable, is it? You know, uh, think about how horrible that was for the people at that rapper's concert when everybody in the crowd, hundreds of people, were pushing to get to the front and trampled and killed people. Talk about selfishness. Talk about the darkness of sin just to get closer to that person they idolize to kill people in the way. You know, it's just horrible. But, but, you know, Jesus had become like a rock star. And all these people, they found that he was in town and, and they wanted to see another miracle. That They wanted to see him in action. And so they all pressed around. Some of them needed healing. And, and so they pressed around him, trying to, trying to get to him, trying to, trying to get closer to him. So she really had to work hard. Even though they were pressing her, had to work real hard to, to get to him and uh, touch him like she wanted to do. So many times people will do that to you. Uh, people will, will come to you and take your time and, and, and say, we, we need you to do this. And you know what, when, when God wants you to be used in a certain way and do a certain thing, don't let anything keep you from that. Say, and I've had to say that before. I had to learn that the hard way as a young pastor to say no. You know, I would love to come to you. Thank you for calling me and I'll pray for you. But, but I can't come to you right now because God said I needed to be over here in this place doing this. Because I already gave this person my word that I'd be there. But as soon as that's finished, I'll come to you then. Oh, that's too late, preacher, you know. Well, I have to do God's will. People get angry and 
and people will even hate you and cut you off and despise you. But you know what? Jesus said they would, didn't he? And people will press you to, to get you to do things their way. And, and you've got to always stand up for God's will. Do what's right. Number three, our faith should be like the clean woman who ran to Jesus when everyone around her addressed her. So they dissed her, they pressed her, and they also addressed her. And we know what they addressed her as. The unclean woman. Unclean, unclean. And that's B.C. That's before Christ. But after she touched Jesus and she was made well, that changed. A.C., after Christ, she was clean woman, wasn't she? You know, something about her that we don't think about. And if you look between the lines of the word of God, you'll see that. That Jesus knew everything was going to happen the way it did. He's God. He's all-knowing, omniscient. And so whenever Jesus asks a question, it's not that he needs somebody to tell him the answer. He knows the answer. He always asks a question for a reason. And it's usually for the people around him to think about that answer, you know. So there's many reasons, many speculations why he asked that question, who touched me? He knew who touched him. And I've always said, you know, Jesus is the only true Superman, you know. And when he, when he would ask things like that, he was kind of acting like Clark Kent, you know. Just a normal man, you know. And, and he had to do that from time to time. That's why he told his disciples, don't tell anybody about this. Because it would cause such an uproar, they'd try to kill him sooner, see. And he had to die on the cross. That was prophesied. So here's some reasons why Jesus asked who touched me. One is to give the clean woman time to confess that she had touched him. And to give testimony. Because all she did was just touch him, instantly healed, and then she just, she was all by herself with people all around her pressing her. And she wasn't going to say another thing. See, it was against Jewish law for her to touch him. But she knew the love of God. And that supersedes Jewish law, always. That's why the... Jewish Pharisees got so angry at Jesus and wanted to kill him because he always superseded Jewish law with God's love. Laws can be broken when you do God's will. See, And whenever the laws of the land go against God's law, and, and they do that from time to time, don't they? You know, it's, it's against the law to say certain things today that would offend people. And, and sometimes Christians have been arrested for that, for hate speech uh, or, or saying something that causes an uproar and chaos. But, you know, Christians that are spirit-filled, they're not going to jail for being faithful to God. But here she was trembling because she wasn't quite sure what would be next. Here I am totally healed and don't quite know what's going to happen now. And so in The Chosen, it's really, really cool how they do this. Because when she touches Jesus in The Chosen, he's walking, all of a sudden he goes, oh, like that. Because the power comes from him. And he turns around and he says, who touched me? And then Peter says what he says. You, you're pressed with people. What do you mean you touched? Everybody's touching you. No, power, power left me. Who touched me? giving her time to say, I'm ready to give my testimony. See, whenever Jesus does something for you, anything, you should always share with others how great he is. All the way through the Bible, the God commands to proclaim the glories of the Lord. Share your testimony. Share how wonderful Jesus is. And she remembered that, and she had to overcome her trembling her fear, her anxiety in order to give testimony what Jesus had done. And that, listen, that was going to save a little girl, Jairus' daughter. 
because she was actually teaching Jairus what kind of faith he needed for that daughter to be well, see, which is coming up very soon. Another reason, Jesus wanted to show her God's love and God's forgiveness. Number three, Jesus wanted to be more than a great physician to her. He wanted to be Savior, Lord, and friend to her. And so that relationship was about to change. She was about to progress from some, a lost person who was healed to the clean woman. Now, she, she was now physically clean, spiritually unclean, and then Jesus was going to make her spiritually clean, totally clean all the way around, even the cleansing of her mind as well as her soul and body. Number four, Jesus wanted to teach those in the crowd that he has all power as God and that anyone can be made clean physically or spiritually if they just have faith. Number five, Jesus wanted to teach everyone in the crowd that it's never too late to receive a turnaround. It's never too late for, for the shift to happen. And, and so many people, they, they look at figures. They look at numbers. Oh, oh, oh it's, it's failing, it's failing. And how many times have they cut God short by not going the full course and doing what God wanted them to do to see that miracle, to see that turnaround, that shift happen, which only God can do. And also, number six, Jesus wanted to teach them that God can do anything at any time. It's never too late. Here she was, terminal, about to die. It's never too late. Number seven, Jesus wanted to have the crowd hear his words. And think about those words, what he said. Daughter. So when he said that, she had just been saved. Just like the thief on the cross. She had just trusted in him as Savior. So he calls her daughter. See, either you're a child of the devil or you're a child of God. Depending on if you've received Jesus as Savior and Lord. But if you're a child of God, God acknowledges you as his child. And he calls her daughter. Your faith has made you well. So it was, I want y'all to understand, it's not mustering up enough faith that makes you well or answers your prayer, see? And some people say, oh, you have to have great faith. Now, that's contradicting Jesus. Jesus said, faith is big as a mustard seed. Yeah, little bitty mustard seed. You can move mountains if it's God's will. And think about, the other day, Don and I were watching a video of a train going through a mountain. It went through that mountain for 10 minutes. I don't know if I'd like that. <laughs> Going through a mountain for 10 minutes. But God helped them to do that. How can you dig that big of a hole through a mountain for a train track? They were able to move mountains because it was God's will. God can do anything. Number seven, Jesus wanted to show her not only that she was his daughter, but he also said, Go in peace. And at that instant, she quit trembling. Her mind was at peace. Her heart, her soul was at peace with God. And she was made right. She had more strength, more peace. The love of God flowing through her. The spirit of God flowing through her. She was better off than she had ever been in her entire life. And that's when she became known as the clean woman. A hero of the faith. She was no longer the same. I believe, you know, we don't hear the whole story. That's one thing that we enjoy going to heaven and hearing the whole story of what happened afterwards. You know, how did God use her? Like legion. What did legion do? What, what great things did he do after he became born again? And this woman, I, I, I can almost assure you, she became a Christian mentor of others in how to have not only saving faith, but also empowering faith. That God can use you and do anything through you. But you know, sometimes you can have all the faith in the world and keep praising God, 
and it just doesn't happen the way you hoped it would. And you just have to walk so close to Jesus, you accept God's will. Because God always knows what's best. 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 and 10, Paul writes, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So you see, Paul had just, he, he, did, he did everything right. He, he lived a Christ-like life. He let God use him in powerful ways. Uh, he, he prayed that had all the faith in the world, God would take away that thorn in the flesh, whatever that was. Some people think it was painful eye condition. Uh, others assume it was something else. But uh, he always had trouble with his eyes after he was blinded and he got vision back. But uh, we, don't, we don't know what it is. That's one of the things we may find out when we get to heaven. But he, he prayed, God, take away this thorn in the flesh. It had to be very painful for him, like a thorn that that's stuck in there and just won't come out. It's always painful. And, and the Lord said, no, Paul, no. The answer is no. You, you've, had, you've done everything right. I know your faith, but I know what you need, Paul. I know what you, I know what you personally need, Paul. And I want you to remember, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. You know, there, there's not everybody was healed that came to Jesus. And it made some people bitter, didn't it? But it made some people better. And as, as Jesus mentioned many times before we talked about this morning in the message, and I encourage you to watch the message from this morning that talks about this, that see, God says that you must walk through this because this is meant to strengthen you. For what is to come. And every time we go through difficult times, if we walk close to Jesus and we learn from it and we grow from it, God will use that. And we'll be stronger when the time comes in the future that we need it. And we see that over and over in the Bible. All the heroes of the Bible had walked through tough times. Think about Joseph in prison like he was. And how he had to stay there. He he was, he was treated so horribly, lied about. Uh, John the Baptist, you know, he, there he was in prison. And, you know, he's praying and believing, having faith that any second now Jesus is going to open these doors. Uh, you know, God's able to do anything. Get me out of here. And so he stays there in prison a long time. And what's he do? He sends his disciples to Jesus. And they have the question, are you the Messiah? Remember what it says about the Messiah, that, that he will set the captives free? And Jesus says, go back and tell John, the blind see, those who are sick will be healed, are already healed. And so I fulfilled those scriptures, and not everyone's prison is metal bars. But sometimes it's their sin. And the bondage to sin, and they're set free from that. So they went back and gave that message to John. Yes, this is the Messiah. Your cousin is God of the flesh. But what did John say? Jesus must increase. I must decrease. And it was his time to go. You know, God didn't stop him from cutting John's head off. And God wasn't the one that did that. You know, he's not the arsonist, he's the fireman. The devil caused that head to be cut off, but God allowed it because it was John's time to go. And you cannot leave this earth until it's your time to go. So allow the Lord to use you like he used the clean woman to mentor others, to increase the faith of others, to help others to know God better and his love and his power. Remember the commercial when we were growing up in the 60s, uh, Mr. Clean, remember that? He'd go around with that, that long thing and he'd touch them with it. And some, some kid that was real dirty would just all of a sudden get totally clean. And that reminded me of this when I was preparing this message about our friend, the clean woman, you know. And then because she was clean, she could go around and touch others, see, with the message of God, the gospel of Jesus, and they would be made clean. 
And so I want you all to think about that, that every day God wants you to get on that white horse and to watch and pray for those opportunities to clean others up with the gospel of Jesus like she did with her great, great faith. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you and praise you for the clean woman. We thank you, God, for including this in your word. And Lord, we thank you for using that, 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 that spiritual <laughs> lesson, God. It, it, you always were all about uh, parables and stories. And, and here, is, here is a thing that happened right before everybody that would increase their faith in you. And especially the faith of Jairus who needed his daughter to be healed. And Lord, I thank you that when, when Jairus went and, and, and they told him, your daughter's dead, he, he got all upset. And Lord, you said something very beautiful to him. You said, don't be afraid, Jairus. Just have faith. And he remembered the faith of a clean woman. And he said, yes, Lord, yes, I believe. And you healed her. You brought her up from the dead. Thank you, Jesus, for that. And thank you, Lord, how you give us reason. Like all the disciples, like everybody in that crowd, you give us all the reasons every day to celebrate. Like you and your disciples celebrate after this great, great uh, healing. This great, great miracle. God, y'all celebrated big time together. And uh, Lord, we celebrate. We celebrate all that you did while you were here and all that you've done throughout history. Thank you, Lord, for opening our minds and our hearts that we would understand it. And Lord, give us the power of your spirit, not only to live these words, but also to share these words with others because people need these truths about you, Jesus. We love you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank y'all so much for listening. May God bless you.